Hi, dear loves. Welcome to today's spiritual guidance on how life mission and soul purpose comes up during your spiritual awakening. Hi, I'm Nicole, celebrity spiritual advisor, master manifester, and your personal private spiritual life coach. So a spiritual awakening is the moment that you realize you're a soul within a body. And dear loves, be reminded that you are the soul within your human. Being spiritually guided through that process of reaching your higher self and attaining a level of enlightenment that you may have never received before in this lifetime is very possible and through seven proven steps to master any spiritual awakening you will ever have. One of the first things you want to pay attention to when you are being called to your life mission is recognizing and confirming it to be a divinely guided message from our creator. See, the universe will talk to you in so many different ways, and that is spiritual guidance. Spiritual guidance speaks to us through ways that we can receive it and that are undoubtedly and undeniably clear to us, the soul. And it is up to us to control our human or ego in order to live that satisfying dream life and to stop just dreaming about it. So bringing that life mission, your soul purpose, into reality and being successful in it is recognizing that it really is something divine source that God is calling you to. See, you are spiritually gifted. Every single one of us are. Yet you have a different quality and different types of spiritual gifts than I. And I have different spiritual gifts, level, and frequency than my sister. Using those spiritual gifts to serve humanity is living a successful life mission is thriving in this lifetime and serving a higher purpose outside of self. So when you acknowledge that yes, Divine Source is calling you to your higher purpose, your soul mission, that can really rattle the inside and the outside of your existence. It can give you that inner outer struggle. So some of the ways you can really confirm if God is talking to you and telling you, yes, this over here is the path I have for you. And this path in the opposite direction is the path that, the path that you are choosing to go in and it is the opposite of the path that I have you and I have designed for you. Number one are the reoccurring spiritually guided messages that you are receiving. Those messages are messages you cannot define through human logic. For example, you have five different friends or people that you associate with that don't know each other. The only common factor is you. And they have all told you 
the same exact message within a matter of days or weeks, sometimes even hours or minutes. That is undeniably clear. In what spirit is an asking of you to interpret in your life mission and what your calling is. So for example, all five friends or associates may say, Nicole, every time I'm around you, my energy feels so much better. I just get revved up. You just do something to me. Nicole, I was telling somebody about the post that you just put out and I shared it with five different people. It was so encouraging and lightning and uplifting. And it spoke directly to me, spoke to my soul. Girl, thank you for putting it out there. Friend number three, Nicole, every time I talk to you, I just feel better. Could you please just give me some words of encouragement? Friend number four, Nicole, girl, I saw an opportunity that I think you would be good at. I think it's, it just speaks directly to you. As, as soon as I saw it, I saw you. Oh yeah, what is it? It's a keynote speaker and I know you'd be great at it. You inspire and you uplift and I know you could do it. It's on spirituality. Friend number five. Nicole, we need a teacher to empower these group of youth. You think you can stand in until we get someone that can do it permanently? We would love you. You would be great at it. I don't know a better cheerleader. Five people will have said, Nicole, you are a healer through your energy. You uplift and inspire through spirituality. Honey, why aren't you teaching, sharing, and spreading spiritual guidance to humanity? That is my life mission. And dear loves, I can tell you that that's pretty much the start of what pulled me into understanding what spirit was telling me to do. You read you interpret your spiritual guidance after you acknowledge that you're even receiving it. You might be waking up in the middle of the night, same time. The vision that comes to you is the sadness that comes over you because you know in a matter of hours you're going to have to wake up and go to a job that you just don't like. Energy that is toxic, sucks you dry, drains you completely. You come home at night exhausted. By the time Friday rolls around, you just can't be around anybody. You feel like your soul just hurts. And you just need to be cleansed and uplifted. And each day gets worse. You might find yourself on lunch break looking for job opportunities and just saying, I can't do this anymore. I hate my job. This isn't me. I don't like it. Whether it pays the bills or not, you're already opening up to your soul mission. Another thing you want to look at is your escape. Go back to your childhood first. Now I know that when I work with clients in my private coaching practice, that it does bring up some painful memories. And even in our group spiritual coaching, it brings up times of the past that often we are afraid to go back to. Dear love, make no mistake, I don't want to tell you to relive trauma or abuse. I don't want you to have to go back down memory lane when there's destruction and sadness and horrific memories that you wanted to block out up until this point of spirit 
calling you to a higher purpose. But I, and, and I invite you, I welcome you to take charge of your spiritual journey and your spiritual awakening because make no mistake about it, when spirit, God, when our Lord, when the universe reaches directly out to you through spiritual guidance, it is because you deserve so much more than you have ever given yourself or received before in this lifetime. And spirit is calling you to feed faith and starve fear. So as you do go back and you look at your escape, what made you happy as a child? What brought you joy? What brought that smile to your soul and your face and your entire existence just lit up and you beamed and blossomed and you were the brightest star with the most pure heart and soul. Your eyes just glistened with joy when you were doing this one thing. I'll use me as an example. When I was having tea parties and mud pies and making collard greens out of grass and I was hidden away in a thicket of thorn bushes, I was talking to my angels and my spirit guides. I was communing with God and I was in my heaven on earth and I felt totally in love with those moments of pure divine spiritual escape. I didn't know to call it spiritual guidance then. I didn't know that speaking to angels and having ancestors and my ascended loved ones and the the old lady that passed away in the same building come to me in spirit. I didn't know that that was not normal at that time. I knew it was my escape. It, I knew Saturday morning I could wake up. We had pancakes and breakfast and for breakfast and eggs and bacon. And we listened to old school Saturdays. And um, I watched my parents dance. I danced with my mom in the kitchen. And I zoomed outside as soon as I got done. And they excused me from the table. I raced out those doors so that I could play with my angels. That was my escape. And so what I do now is my escape. Though I live my dream life in reality. And I welcome you to do the same. What was your escape from the pain, the trauma, the experiences that you should have never been a part of? What was your escape? Then fast forward it. Fast forward it into young adulthood and adulthood. What was your escape? What is your escape now? My escape is the same thing in a different level and in different ways that I've grown into in my wisdom and maturity, knowledge, experience, and love for what I do to help serve humanity with spiritual guidance. It's the same exact escape in a different time. 40 some odd years later. So knowing that is very precious. It will take an attitude adjustment for you to go into your life mission. And it takes that ability to dive deeply into really what you're passionate about. I would warn you to avoid one of the most common mistakes that I see many of my clients in my private coaching practice do. And that is paying attention to the bells and the whistles of what everyone else is doing and 
going into the same life mission or soul purpose that you see someone else seemingly succeeding in and feeling like, well, they can do it. I can be successful at it too. But that it may not be your it. Find your life mission. Find your soul purpose. What fulfills you may not fulfill even your twin sibling. So I pray that this helps. You can find further spiritual guidance on life mission and soul purpose and discovering what your calling is on our podcast, Nicole XO. It's available on all good podcast players, and I welcome you to it. We also have a Life Mission Masterclass Academy. We are not accepting any um, right now. The doors have been closed, but they will reopen um, later, and you will definitely be the first to know if you um, be so kind as to leave your email address at our website, NicoleXO.com and I'll give you your free limited edition of one of the books I wrote. It's an ebook and it's an instant download for you. The Art of Manifestation. Aligning Mind, Body, Spirit. So I pray that this helps and honey, thank you for your love and support. Please like Leave a comment, share about your journey and your spiritual awakening and how you've been called to rediscover your soul purpose. Love you. I'll talk to you very, very soon.